Welcome back to The Pickup, Stab and Vans weekly show, taking you behind the scenes on the North Shore for the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. We're here in Haleiwa with my co-host, Nathan Fletcher. It was a big week in Hawaii. What did we get into this week, Nate? Uh, we went down to Pipeline and we took the pickup truck down there so all the kids could come down and try the progressive surf crafts that you made. Harry Bryant just rolled into town and he brought with him a grip of boards from Australia. And then Kyle Foyle is gonna be teaching us the most important life-saving techniques in the world, which is CPR, so pay attention. This episode's all about Haleiwa, so we picked up locals Betty Lou Sakura Johnson and Kuio Young for a look at what is the closest thing to the North Shore's downtown. And we also went by Aquila Ipa's shop in Sand Island, who makes some of the most progressive surf crafts in the world. But first, Tosh Tudor and Pua DeSoto are in the pickup news garden with all the news that happened in surfing this week. Take it away, Tosh and Pua. Welcome back to the Pickup News Garden. I'm Tosh Tudor. This is Pua de Soto, and we're going to tell you what happened in this week of surfing. The first proper swell for the Vance Triple Crown waiting period filled in, and Al Cleland Jr. faced off against Backdoor. Apparently, nobody told him that was just a saying. Oh, I kind of just got cracked by my board. Definitely needs a couple stitches, I'm pretty sure, but we'll see. The good news for Al is that he got a sweet ride to Kahuku Medical Center. It seems Teslas have replaced lifted pickups as the official vehicle of the North Shore. No word yet on when charging stations will be available at Ehukai Beach Park. Haleiwa is currently the Vance Triple Crown's most difficult wave to surf. The drive can be up to an hour and a half each way during this holiday season on the 7 mile per hour miracle. Lastly, Jack Robinson invited 50 fellow surfers to his birthday party at Pipeline. They didn't know it though, at least not until they saw the clips. And now it's time for the icing on the cake. Oh, look at that. Nothing like permanent priority on your birthday, eh, hey, Jack? That was impressive, even if you were just taking waves off a bunch of teenagers on twin fins. Anyways, we've got some big news on the Vans Triple Crown leaderboard. Not this, don't, don't look at this. In the dying hours of last week's submission window, Kuyo Young posted this wave to the Vans Triple Crown digital portal, riding an Aquila Ipa 2 plus 1 from our Progressive Craft Quiver. Kuyo got a 14.8 out of 30 for this backdoor runner and snatched the Vans Crown Clip right from John Michael Van Hohenstein's strong, presumably German hands. This must have been heartbreaking for Johnny, who had a firm grasp of that $500 restaurant gift card all the way up until the final hour. But it still wasn't as heartbreaking as what happened to Eli Hanneman. Eli rode arguably the best wave of last week, threading a double tube at Pipeline into a massive air on the end section, which all sounds like a good thing, except for the fact that the wave isn't going to count. And to be clear, Eli didn't just miss the Vans Crown Clip submission deadline. He missed the entire Vans Triple Crown sign-up period, which means he's ineligible for this year's event. In other news, John Florence got two crazy backdoor waves that he hasn't submitted yet, but probably will. Baron Mamiya punched through a chandelier like it owed him money. And Tomas Hermes, who is definitely not me, scored a sweet little roll-in that makes backdoor look attainable for the everyman. It's not. But at the end of week one, Johnny the Ripper still has a stranglehold over the overall Vans Triple Crown leaderboard. 
He's got 43.8 points across his six submitted waves, all of which were ridden on a board over nine feet. Meanwhile, on the women's side, Zoe McDougall won this week's Vans Crown Clip with her sneaky backdoor tube, as Moana Jones just missed Monday's upload window with her crazy double barrel at pipe. Moana's wave will count toward this coming week's Crown Clip submissions, and right now she's looking like an easy winner. And not to upset any betting agencies, but we've yet to see a submission from last year's Vans Triple Crown winner, Carissa Moore. Tashin Pua said that Haleiwa is the hardest wave to surf on the North Shore right now, but that's all about to change. The backdoor shootout window runs from January 4th to 16th, and the Dahui crew will be taking over the lineup for the best four days in this period. That means you'll need to be out at first light before the comp begins, or pre-dark when they're done for the day, if you want to get a solid pipe wave during the next couple weeks. And for anyone wondering, waves caught in the backdoor shootout will not count in a surfer's Vans Triple Crown scoreline. Because, to be fair, that's kind of like fishing with dynamite. As a result, we'll see a lot more submissions from Haleiwa and Sunset in the next couple weeks, especially with the current swell forecast. Now back to Tosh and Pua to discuss a strange, nearly forgotten species that's been lurking around the North Shore recently. Thanks, Mikey. With Christmas behind us and swell on the way, there has been plenty of new arrivals on the North Shore. Most notably, a rare breed of surfers known as astrologists. Oh wait, Australians. After nearly two years of forced reclusion, the first direct flight from Australia to Honolulu landed on December 15th. Since then, lineup chatter has been filled with strange sayings and abbreviated words. You reckon? It's safe to say they're pretty damn excited to be back. But will they be overly eager like the Vaughn brothers here? We'd hate to see another version of busting down the door. Speaking of which, I just heard Harry Bryant got to town. I basically got three board bags and just packed them to the brim. Every single board that I'm just really looking forward to riding. It's such a sick feeling, like knowing that they're all here now and I've just got to wait for some surf and I can take my pick of all of them and ride them. So scared of the wind. It's like the Mary Poppins handbag. <laughs> There's just no bottom, no bottom to it. All right, it's gonna fit perfectly. <laughs> One for each day. This board here, similar to this one and this one is shaped by a guy called Josh Keo. This has kind of been a bit of a project that myself and Josh have been working on uh, pretty much for the past year. Yeah, I've been really excited to ride these boards. Like we've been playing around with fin placement and rails and you know we've got all the like all my kind of decals laminated under the board and it's kind of just yeah been a bit of a fun project. I was kind of in the shaping bay like watching them be made and helping out and things like that so it's been a nice process to be able to be included and um, just watch something get made from the very start. So this is a original Al Burn, Burning Spears, 6.5. Um, I've actually been riding this board a lot through the winter at home, and then I ended up kind of putting it on ice to bring over here. Very narrow, <laughs> pointy through here. They don't call it a Burning Spear for nothing. So these three boards, I'm not sure if you might, you might remember, but two years ago, last time I was in Hawaii, I uh, told a story in one of the pickup episodes of a second-hand board I got off a guy at a pub in South Australia. Uh, I've actually kept in touch with Paul Gravel. He heard that I was coming back over this year and offered to shape me three new ones, which I'm over the moon about. Like, these three boards are hand-shaped. Probably the nicest finish on a board I've ever seen. Cut polish, yeah, just classic old logos. Really nice weight, like, it just feels like it'd be a really good board over here. That's straight quad as well. This is a 6.8, that's a 6.10, and that's a 7.7. This is my progressive board for the for the Vans Triple Crown this year. So yeah, if you see this thing in the lineup, it means business. Last but not least, the big kahuna up the back. This is an 8.5, um, shaped by Josh Keogh. It's got these uh, kind of splayed out channels in the bottom. With the way that these channels were, 
and how it's just kind of splaying water out the side there, we kind of thought that it might have worked better as a quad. I care so much about every single one of those surfboards and they all have a story to tell. I think in the past couple of years, like I've just really honed in on working on my relationship with all my shapers and I think that quiver right there is just the product of having great relationships with, with shapers and things like that. Yeah, that's my quiver. Hope I didn't bore you too much there.